I have been able to work with young people all over the planet. I've been able to connect with incredible human beings that I call friends and inspirations, one of them being Jack Noble here. I met Jack many years ago at a school called Chatham High School in Tarri. He had a degenerative disease health issue that he knew was not going to get better. He could not talk or walk or move his body in the way he would have liked to, but his brain worked perfectly. He would express that his brain felt like it was in a cage. He was caged by his body. And even though he couldn't talk, we got along and he came to a workshop that I was giving, a whole series of workshops for a week at his school. And he came with his carer and they asked if they could join in. And I didn't know how that would work. I was a bit ignorant, to be honest, about what his process would be to write with me. But he sat there with his carer and she had a sheet that had the letters of the alphabet on it. And every time she pointed to a letter of the alphabet that he recognized and liked, he would squeeze her hand a little tighter or blink or give her a sign. And so it would go like this, one letter at a time, slowly, meticulously, writing out one word at a time, one line at a time. And over the course of a week, while all the other students had perhaps written three poems and rubbed them all out and ended up with nothing or maybe something quite short, he was meticulously writing and actually composing the poem in his head because he knew he didn't have time to lose. And at the end of that week, Jack had composed with Marilyn Connors, his carer, a poem. And I was lucky enough to read that poem with Jack on stage. I was at lucky enough to be his voice in that moment and there was not a dry eye in the room he said things like take care of each other take care of yourselves appreciate what you have i will never fall in love i will never have a child i will never hold uh, my child in my arms i will never grow old respect what you have i can hear you when you talk about me in the corridors come to me talk to me make jokes with me I want to hear your voices. I want to know you. And it was the first time they'd heard him express himself in, in that way. And I said to Jack, if you write a book of 30 poems, if you write 30 poems, I will promise I will help you publish a book. And I didn't know if that was ever going to happen, knowing how difficult it would be for him. And two years later, I received a package in the mail, 30 poems by Jack Noble. And we returned to his place, to his school, and a local mob came out and gave him uh, an incredible welcome and local uh, newspapers and, and news stations came out with their cameras and it was a big story for the local community. And he gave so much to people in that moment, so much hope to people in that moment. And I stood on stage with him and read all 30 poems in a row, the whole book from start to finish. Um, to the crowd and everybody was just wrapped. It was, a, it was a very powerful day. And when people ask me who are my favorite poets, Jack Noble was one of them up there because of his resilience, because of his ability to persist. I also had another experience in another school with a student named Michaela. And Michaela, if you're watching right now, I want to send a shout out to you. And thank you so much for sending me your poem after these all these years. We were able to work together in a center that was a, about assisting young people that kind of fall, slipped through the cracks of mainstream schooling. And I had a workshop process that was about writing a breakup letter to an inanimate object. And most of the time, this is funny, like, dear basketball, when I first met you, we were meant to be for each other. And now, just because I broke my ankle, you want to see someone else. Or dear maths, I thought we were going to be friends but you're just way too complex for me. And usually it is something funny, but Michaela wrote something extremely powerful and brave. She wrote, Dear Razor Blade, I remember when we first met. I was in eighth grade when you graced across the soft white wrists. You told me how to release my pain in a way no one else could. I couldn't believe that something so small could make so much pain feel so good. I'm writing this to tell you, it's time to take a break for good. You've caused me harm for years now. It needs to end. 
I'm sorry, you just didn't make the cut to stay in my life. I get shivers now just reading it. And at the time, the room was dead silent. It was one of the most powerful things I've been able to witness. And I'm extremely thankful for that. For that. And in those moments, I've seen young people be able to achieve incredible things. I've seen them change the room, change their teachers' opinions of them. I've seen one boy read a similar type of poem to that one that Michaela did, and the whole class afterwards got up and lined up to hug him one by one. And these are 13 and 14 year olds. And there is compassion, there is power, there is strength, there is love, there is vulnerability, there is honesty in amongst young people in Australia, but we need to give them the space to do that. And if not, then they end up like many of us, much older and with a lot of backlog of things that we need to be talking about and dealing with now. But it's not all dark and it's not all heavy. I've seen how that process lifts the heaviness once the issue is named in the room. I've seen how it affects community, uh, whether it's in a school or in a venue like the New York and Poets Cafe, I've seen communities become educated on each other when the television or political rhetoric is taken out of the equation of us getting to know each other. We do not need any middleman to hear each other's stories. I realize that my activism really is in helping facilitate these vulnerable and honest moments to break down barriers of fear between young people and adults and to slowly, one line at a time, work to strengthen and tighten the fabric of our communities, one workshop, classroom or performance or speech at a time. And so now the good news for me is that since I've been spiraling upwards, great things have been able to happen and I've been able to give back and offer similar experiences to people around the planet. One of them is the Rhodes Poetry Retreat which is a retreat that I run in that very same village where my great grandmother was the midwife of the village. I now get to welcome people into that village, into my family, to hang out on ancient sites, to sit on the edge of cliffs and write poems. And it's safe by the way, there's a ledge under there, I promise. And we are able to create great memories and give people the freedom to write their own stories and create great new narratives for themselves. And in all of this, in all these years since this whole thing started for me, when it comes to considering resilience, I've learnt a few important things. I've learnt that it's important to listen to and understand other people's stories of resilience, to be able to trigger our own resilient DNA, which we, this is why we must defend the arts, why we must keep people writing and performing and back at their desks and back on their stages because we need these stories to be able to pull from our own DNA to survive difficult times. I've also learned to invest deeply into my own healing, physical, mental, spiritual, cultural, whatever it is, and to change my measures of success, to change my measures of success from being solely monetary or career-based to deeper bigger, more important things, even more important things than myself, so that I can begin to do that spiraling upwards towards a better sense of self. I've also learned that it's important to know myself because if meditation doesn't work for me and I'm going to spend uh, 10 years wasting my time doing that because I don't know myself, it's much better for me to know myself first, skip the wastage of 10 years and try something else that I know is better for me. So knowing thyself is extremely important. Also, to never underestimate the power of the planet, of country, of the earth. This is possibly the greatest pool of resource that we have, the greatest pool of healing and connection that there is, and something that none of us can escape. We all live within this controlled environment that we must take care of. And in that also, to make sure that once we find our resilience, that our cups spilleth over, that we give back to one another in order to increase the durability and resilience of society at large. Each one, teach one, is what hip hop would say about that, to make sure that we pass on these things through being a mentor and also being mentored. And also from my yaya, from me to you, to always keep our sense of humor alive 
do not ever forget that we are just ants living on a big, big blue and green ball at the end of the day. And yet we can be important players. We can be powerful in that as well. Thank you.